you are an unruly crowd, I can, I can say. Paul, that looks like a bathrobe sitting up there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very... And, 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 a, and, a, and, a, and there's a bear's outfit back there. It's very in, fetching, actually. In the, in the poop tent there, whatever you're going to call that. Well, you know, let's go take a look, shall we? Let's take a look at this. Well, there it is. One of that Bears jerseys for sale back there. I'm sure. I'm quite sure it is. Here we are at Pook. We are at Pook here in the great... Yeah. He's going to show us something over here. The world's most versatile bit of clothing. Watch this guy here. So after we package up these uh, fantastic socks, three for 30, by the way. Uh, now, Satisfied so customer. Right here, is the world's most versatile bit of clothing. This is a great Canadian sock hat. Now let me show you what makes it so versatile and makes it so great. I go like this, I have a Donald Trump comb over, right? But more realistic for the balding is a double Donald Trump comb over. But we're Canadian, so we don't do Donald Trump comb overs. We'll flip it inside out. Now, oh my, oh, very nice, yeah, very, very nice. Cash, but you know what? It doesn't very nice. Here because Michael Jackson's third album, track one, he said it best, I'm bad, I'm bad. But we can go into the Middle East, your Turkish vibe. How about the bowler? How about Cat and Hook? How about the late, great Ray Charles, sensory deprivation? All your planes, trains, and migraines. And if you get a couple of boozy koozies, you'll know why I have migraines. But my favorite one is after a long day's work, you know, I just finished beating the crap out of Cat and Hook. I'm back at my place in Neverland Ranch. I gotta make sure that if my feather's standing longer than four hours, I gotta call a doctor or refer to the uh, style guide flowchart, which we have laminated to practice in the shower. Or the rain, perfect for right now. You should buy five. <laughs> right. Let's give this man a hand Absolutely. here. Come on. Hell yes. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, what? Uh, you're, this is it's a podcast one. here. What's your name? My name is Travis. His I'm name from, is Travis. I'm from Toronto. Pook, we're Canadian. Yay, Toronto! Go Yay. Canada! Okay. You know what? We know how to stay warm. Sure we do. Right? Because it's freezing. <laughs> you sleep inside of an elk. Is, is, the, right. is the Bears jersey for sale? Uh, so this is for sale, but um, not here. We have to go online because we ordered them in. We do have... Um, See? There you go. Many, there you go. Different kinds. Do you have any White Sox material back there? <laughs> well, not back here. Not back here. But we actually do have most teams. There, uh, hey, and most I say most teams just to save my own hat. <laughs> you know, um, but where you can go to check out everything that we have is uh, pook.ca. All right, pook. Potential sponsor. You can't miss that, man. That's pook. It. Here at the Chris Kindle Market in beautiful Aurora. That's nice. All right. Thank you, my friend. Travis, let's give him a hand, him, a hand again. Travis. Say hi to Toronto for us. friends and uh, welcome from Rivers Edge Park in Aurora, Illinois. Pat Crimmins, along with yours truly, Ray Rogina, just a couple of guys and we're at the Chris Kindle Market. And Pat, I know you've been to Chris Kindle Market before. Yes, yes. Give me an idea of what I'm going to see inside. Well, you're going to see a lot of people walking around, a lot of people lined up. Uh, you're going to see uh, shops uh, until you can't see anymore. Every shop is going to have something different. Old trinket, uh, 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 ornaments, a scarf, a hat, food, all sorts of food. Well, I, we're we're going to talk to the uh, CEO and general manager of the Kindle Market. Yes. She's going to give us an idea of what's going to be going on here. But we're also going to talk to the uh, manager of downtown Aurora, and she's going to talk about how uh, this, what this means for Aurora. Right. right. But I want to know the most important thing. What can I expect that we have food in here? Well, we're going to meet with Bob. 
What's the last name? Chartier. Uh, well, if the French pronunciation is Cartier, but I think yes. he calls himself Cartier. Or something. Bob from the Pierogi's Food Factory. Yes. Yes. He's going to talk a little bit about pierogies, food, uh, food maybe, factory. Maybe, maybe we'll get a kielbasa. Maybe we'll get a kielbasa. And you know, uh, what is the difference between a kielbasa and a uh, Bratwurst. Well, I, I know this much. A bratwurst is a German sausage and a kielbasa is Polish. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Anybody who is worth their weight in a, in a business sense wants to open something Polish in this area because outside of Warsaw, Chicago is the second biggest the Polish enclave in the world. Wonderful people, too. Wonderful people. So, we're going to, you, you've got an idea of what we're going to see in here. We're going to walk inside. My wife Diane's with it. Kevin's here. Kevin's wife's here. Paul's here. We're all here. We're gonna have a good time. Pat's by himself. Pat's by himself, <laughs> but that's uh, far usual. <laughs> and so anyway, uh, we'll be right back. But we're headed inside. My name is uh, Robert Schartz here. I'm the event manager for Pierogi's Factory. We're a uh, we're Colorado-based company, and we got two restaurants, two food trucks in Colorado, and then we do events. So. We're here in Aurora on pierogies and uh, poor sausage. Well, let me ask you a question here. Yes, sir. Your CEO is from Poland. Yes, sir. He comes to Denver, but it seems like a wise move to come to Chicago area since uh, outside of Warsaw, Chicago, the second largest Polish enclave in the world, I think. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, in, in Colorado, we'll be selling pierogies on the food truck. And people go, what's a pierogi? And then when we're selling pierogies in, in Aurora, Illinois, they go, oh, I love pierogies. I would take it here at the uh, fest uh, that uh, 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 there's not a problem with the people identifying with pierogies. Or, oh, yeah. Everybody loves pierogies. Everybody's grandma made pierogies. Just for, just for those of us who are not Polish, what is a pierogi? What does it consist of? I love that question. So this is a, this is a sample. Right? A pierogi, it's a Polish dumpling. The shell is made 50% out of potato and cheese, or out of potato, right? right. That's where it gets like unique flavor. Our fillings that we have here in Aurora are potato and farmer's cheese, and then potato and onion. Ah. And then uh, the uh, accompanying sausage for this plate is, is a... Is a kielbasa. Kielbasa. Yeah. The kielbasa is actually the only thing we don't make in-house. We source it from Andy's Deli in Chicago. Oh, I love Andy's. Yeah, I know, oh, they make yeah. they make the best sausages. We've been shipping them in from... I was going to ask you this question. A kielbasa is different from a Polish sausage house. I think kielbasa is a Polish sausage. Yeah, it is. So like a, a, a bratwurst is a German sausage, a kielbasa is a Polish sausage. So I go to Portillo's, God forbid, and I order a Polish sausage, I'm really getting a kielbasa. Yeah. Now, let me ask this question. The yeah. difference between a kielbasa and a schnitzel. A schnitzel. Ah. So schnitzel is, uh, is pork that we pound thin, and then we bread and fry. And then we serve it in the restaurant with some mushroom cream sauce on top. It's our, it's our top Have salad. you ever so, had schnitzel? Yes, I have. At a, at a German restaurant outside of Champagne in Gibson City. I've been there to the Burgoff. Our producer perked up when I said champagne. Uh, I've been but, to the Burgoff, uh, had the schnitzel. Very heavy meal. Gravy, potatoes. Right. You walk out of there, you're a little uh, satisfied. You, you're full. It fills yes, you up. That's it right. doesn't leave you hungry. But it sounds like, especially you got a, a particular sauce to put on this one. What about good old mustard? We've got some mustard, yeah. Uh, we put mustard on it. Some people use ketchup. Uh, Chada Wait, would say who, that that's who, an abomination. Is, yeah, who's putting ketchup on a kielbasa? Americans. Oh. <laughs> uh, is there a Chicago style <laughs> right, kielbasa right. where we don't allow ketchup? Now here's another sample of your wares here, and I see that yes, this particular sandwich, you have the sausage and you have the sauerkraut. Yes, sir. Describe this for our audience. So it's it's a kielbasa. Tilted, yeah. We'll tilt it so that we can see it here. Uh, it's a kielbasa sausage, right, with some sauerkraut that we toast up on a bun. Um, this one is great with a little bit of mustard. It's it's to die for. It's a fantastic four stock. When can we expect you to have a food truck or a shop here in Aurora? That's that's a great question, you know. I don't know that I'd be able to answer that. I think we'll definitely probably... We'll have to talk to the mayor about right? that. Right? <laughs> uh, I'm think, sure he would allow that. We're pro-food truck here in Aurora. Oh, I, I, I know. And food trucks are great, bringing the food to the people. We mentioned sauerkraut here. Sir. And I did a little research before I right. got here, and I understand that you have, as part of your menu, a sauerkraut salad. 
Yes, Describe sir. that for our audience. Yeah, so the sauerkraut salad is uh, in the restaurants. We actually get our kraut shipped in from Poise. And so it's, it's authentic as it gets, right? With the salad, we add a little bit of onion, a little bit of uh, cool. carrots, a little bit of sugar, some seasonings that I can't tell you about, some secret. secrets. We don't want to get <laughs> and, uh, into that. Great secrets are always important. <laughs> it makes for, uh, it's just a phenomenal kraut salad. It's, so many people in the food truck are like, I don't want kraut, I don't like it. And I say, hey, try oh. some of our kraut. They try it, they're in love with it. Now, uh, one question. Uh, is there kielbasa, pulled sausage, different than a bratwurst? Yes. How so? Uh, bratwurst is a German sausage, right? Okay. It's usually a little bit like, has more spice to it. Okay. A kielbasa isn't spicy at all. It has a little bit of a sweet tang to it, right? I'm, Kielbasas I'm, are tough. I'll be, we'll be talking to the CEO at some point here, and I, I would guess that we could walk not too far in this particular park and find a bratwurst pretty easily. Oh, sure, sure. I was just trying to get the difference. How about a Golabek? Talk about a Golabek <laughs> for me. I, 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 I decided to research all this stuff, and I, I said, well, this will be interesting to ask a real authoritarian oh, yeah. about this. Go ahead. I love it. So we, we pronounce it Golapi. That's a uh, ah, Caesar, well, I, Caesar okay, Italian, right? right? It depends whether you come from Poland, Ukraine, you, you <laughs> pronounce it differently, right? right. Um, so it's, it's pork, Note rice. Note the self here. Yeah. Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It's pork, rice, and spices that's ground together wrapped in cabbage and then we simmer it and top it, top it with a like sweet tomato sauce. Oh, please. It's to die for. We don't have that with us today at the market. Sorry to hear but that. If you ever visit us it's in Colorado, reason I can't. it's so delicious. <laughs> I think the Labek or whatever you say. Yeah, says. yeah. I think we'll definitely plan to have it here next year. Hey, how about talk a little bit about your catering business? Catering. Yes, yeah, so we cater for all events. We do corporate lunches. We do uh, weddings. Uh, me and Reagan, we did a wedding the other day. Super right from the food truck. Have you ever been to a um, Polish wedding? Yes, I'm still hungover. They know how to party. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun. They're fun. And then everybody went to work afterwards. Oh yeah, yeah. you wake up the next morning. That's that's their culture. Very hard. Caesar uh, uh, or Chadik as his Polish name. Well, for our audience here, and we certainly want to give you the time since mm -hmm. you've been so gracious to come on here. Uh, throw us a website, throw us a phone number, Absolutely. whatever you need to do. Yeah, so our, our website is pierogiesfactory.com. Uh, pierogi is spelled P I E R O G I. We spell pierogies, which is P I E. Pierogies. Pierogies, right? Which is double plural, technically. We spell it P I E R O G I E S factory.com. You can order pierogies online. We've got 14 different flavors. You can order them now. It'll be in time for Christmas. Could you FedEx them to me? Yeah, it's, 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 it's overnight shipping included right. in the pricing. Right. Uh, you can pick from any of the 14 flavors. Sauerkraut mushroom is a great one. Oh. Very traditional. You know, the podcast is having a Christmas function. Oh, yeah. So maybe we'll have a little kielbasa. Yeah, ship them in. They'll get here in time for, uh, for Christmas. <laughs> okay. uh, and the website? Is pierogiesfactory.com. Yep. Right. Well, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to and I'm going to show this again to the audience. I'm looking forward to this a little bit. Uh, and uh, all I can say is uh, any Polish specialty food area is okay with me because I think Polish food is wonderful. I've enjoyed it numerous times in numerous places. Right. And I want to congratulate you for bringing it here to not only to the Kindle market, but into the Chicago land area. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Lovely to meet you guys. Thanks. Robert, David, I'm going to pronounce the French pronunciation. <laughs> Chartier. 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 And uh, he's with... Also known as Bob. The Pierogi's Factory. Pierogi's Factory. Factory.com. Order them in for uh, Christmas. Thanks, Bob. All right. Thanks again, and we'll be right back. At McNally Heating and Cooling, we understand that customer satisfaction starts with arriving at your home on time. Your service technician will apply the same attention to detail and quality workmanship to every job, large or small. We offer upfront, honest pricing, and we'll make sure the job gets done right from start to finish. From furnace and air conditioning service, minor repairs, or total equipment replacement, we do it all. Give us a call or find us online and let the luck of the Irish work for you. Diane's here with Pat and I, and uh, we're here in the in front of a pierogi and kielbasa tent. And uh, we talked to the guy a little while ago, Pat. And, yeah. Uh, the line, though, to get it over there, it looks like it's pretty heavy. Uh, at, at no point in time did I realize kielbasa was uh, so popular. I saw you nibbling on some kielbasa. Did you like it? It was wonderful. It was. It was, it was very wonderful. good. It was wonderful. <laughs> the pierogis were mighty tasty too. 
you like the pierogi, like and you and you quaked it down with a big big old beer. Yeah, yes, I did. Yeah, the podcast is going to expand into restaurant reviews. There you go. Yes. There you go. All wonderful. Good beer, good brogies, good sausages. What more could you What better than cake? Absolutely. Oh, you can't beat Saturday night in Aurora at the Chris Kindle Market. That's right. That's it. Wonderful. All right. So what do we got here? We got we got Bob's Belgian. Uh, well, that's hot chocolate. Bob's over here somewhere. Oh yeah. I thought we got the It's another Bob. Bob. It's another Bob. My Bob Belgian. Excuse me. Sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry, folks. Sorry. Here it is. There he is. Is that guy over there? I don't see him. Oh, there he is. I think he's back. No, that's not him either. If he's getting the back there, we could get him. He's probably sleeping in the truck. <laughs> he's probably sleeping in the truck. <laughs> no, he's not bad. You know, I hear Kilbasa has that same stuff that Turkey has. Uh, tryptophan. Tryptophan, yeah. Sleep. Sleep. I'll tell you something. He, he intrigued me <laughs> with that sauerkraut salad. The sauerkraut was good. The, the sauerkraut salad with some <laughs> onions and stuff like that. I think it would make that. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know what I've been thinking this whole time? I didn't like sauerkraut until I had a bratwurst at Murphy's for sauerkraut. Ooh, that's good. There's a uh, better food variety downtown. Better food? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more variety of food. There's only a couple of food scenes here, whereas downtown there's food all over the place. What's your favorite German food? See, I didn't see any herring out here. No herring? No herring. Now that, Come on that's down. That's a great point. Uh, Germans are noted for their herring. Yeah, no herring out here, you know? It's like. A lot of coastline in Germany. And I didn't I didn't see um, <laughs> the uh, potato pancakes. I see, I see pierogies, but I didn't see ah. potato pancakes. Blackies. Black, yeah, you know the difference between kielbasa and schnitzel? Well, I know kielbasa is a sausage. A schnitzel, right. schnitzel, isn't that like a... Pounded, uh, yes. Yes. Patty of veal. Uh, chicken it's, it's or veal. pork or veal or the lab tests like aren't that. back yet, but yeah. it's good. <laughs> and, I, and I want you to know that you've been on just a couple of guys. Uh -oh. oh no. <laughs> our, one of our no, no, one of our podcasts here at Pat okay. Crimmins. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? And uh, we appreciate you having a conversation. I hope hey. you're not supposed to be somewhere else. Right? No. <laughs> no, right. not at all. All right. This is where I'm supposed to be tonight. All right. Take all right. care. All right. Thanks, Take guys. Care. Nice, nice talking to you. To you. All Take right. Care. Take care. Thanks. Hello, friends. This is Ray Rogina. I'd like to say a few words about my friends at the Karis Group of Restaurants, one of our sponsors. I've been a frequent guest at all of their fine restaurants for years, one of which is Rookies, which has locations throughout the Fox Valley and beyond. My favorite dish at Rookies is the Euros plate with uh, the Saganaki appetizer. oop My wife, she loves the Hall of Fame chicken sandwich. But I can honestly say that I've never had a bad meal there, regardless of whatever I've had to eat. The wings are out of this world, the salads are delicious, great burgers, tacos, all American specialties, and don't forget their pizza. And of course, you can wash this all down with one of their famous Mai Tais. Try them out. St. Charles, Geneva, Elgin, Hoffman Estates, Huntley, and Roselle. Rookiespub.com. I'll see you there. We are back here in the Timber Tent at Rivers Edge Park and the Chris Kindle Market in Aurora, Illinois, and we're very pleased to have the manager of Downtown Aurora. Person who can tell us a lot of things about Laura, Marissa. Yes. Nice to see you. Oh, it's my pleasure, Ray. And We're Patrick. happy to see you. I'm yes. So excited to be here. Well, we love Chris Kendall Market. So I can excited. assume that you knew because the crowds out there, as you walk into the place, the parking lot, uh, quite an event. And I, and I know that there's this is replayed during the summertime when you have concerts down here. I thought they would have got you a big beer. <laughs> It's very festive. We the love beer it. has been delivered. Uh, in any event, I'd like to have you tell our audience a little bit about your background. I know you told us you're a native of Aurora, uh, but uh, 
Let's talk a little bit about uh, what your obligations are as the manager of downtown. Aurora. Sure. So Aurora Downtown is a nonprofit of business and property owners, and so as the manager, I work with the various committees. We have a streetscape committee, so we are responsible for holiday decorations. The star on the Leland Tower. Yeah. I'm, I don't know so anything about it, but it sounds oh, yeah. exciting. No, so look at the tallest building in downtown, and you'll see a star and a tree all lit up for the holidays. So we love our star. It's kind of a, it's in our logo, and it's representative of City of Lights. City of Lights. Lights. Uh, that, that is your moniker, and uh, you know how how far if you're playing for Christmas. When you say you have to do streetscapes, and I haven't gone into a town yet here in the Fox Valley that doesn't decorate nicely for Christmas. Oh yeah. The question is, how far back do you plan for something? Like that? All year. In fact, right oh, now God. we're ordering flowers for the summer, and we just ordered garland and bows for next. I believe holiday. we'll be back in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Good. So yeah, we had the streetscape committee, we have the events committee, we have business attraction and retention committee, so we have various committees, and we really want to build up downtown and make it a great place for everybody to enjoy. How big is your staff, or can I assume that you have a number of volunteers? We work with lots of community volunteers <laughs> for our events. We love our volunteers. We have a great downtown Board, and uh, I, I love working with our board. And do you receive any city money? Yes. Or does the city fund you in its entirety? So we get budget entirely in front of We are funded by TIF funds okay. and the SSA, which is the special right. service area of downtown. So we do have boundaries and we uh, work with those property owners and business owners in the special service area. So that's those are our members. And so when we have First Fridays, for example. Which are? So First Fridays, the first Friday I mean, I of the month. I understand the calendar aspect of Yes, first yes. The first Friday of the month, we welcome people downtown. It's like an open house. We have art shows, live music, uh -huh. lots of events. Um, people walk around and check out the different venues. We have, we have a couple dozen venues. So purchase, okay, we just had our Coco Crawl. So ask me, yeah, Explain yeah, that, please. Yeah, okay. So you buy a mug and a budget, and you walk around in like 30 participating venues, and you get samples of hot cocoa. And it's like can, a bar crawl without the alcohol. Well, there's even some alcohol. Well, you, you can go to no, some to of the some. bars and get it, uh, get it spiked. A little spice. <laughs> a little Bailey's. Yes, yes. Uh, other Christmas events uh, in Aurora? Do you yeah. Oh, yeah, about? yeah. They're not like very festive, they're very big. And then we also have Art and Market, which welcomes local bakers to Society 57 one more Saturday, so next Saturday, December 17th from 9 to 1. And that's about two dozen local makers, bakers, and artists. We have the trolley going around from noon to 3.30 on uh, Saturdays, so one more Saturday, December 17th, the trolley will come around and pick up guests My son's going there next week and I'm babysitting. Amazing production. They always do a great job. And then we have a Christmas carol, the musical at Riverfront Playhouse. That's our community playhouse. It's been here since the mid-70s. Did you know I was in a Christmas carol last year? And I can have a community trumpet in St. Charles. Can I say something? Uh, a fifth grade, I was Scrooge. I got a standing ovation. I believe that. Uh, I nice. definitely huh? believe that. And so what did you play? Tiny uh, Tim, I yeah. was just a, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, some, uh, somebody observing Scrooge and talking to him and trying to talk about it. Oh, well, that's funny. I, I can't remember. Wow. I can't remember. Scrooge was in charge. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, the, the city of Aurora, you know, this is, this is operated by uh, somebody other than the city of Aurora. But my question is, how, how big is this, this venue here for the city of Aurora in terms of bringing people to the community? 
Oh yeah, River Edge Park is phenomenal. Um, as you know, Chris Kringle Market is new this year, but uh, River Edge Park brings, brings thousands of people each summer for its concert right. series and welcomes everybody. You have a great time, and now there's the pedestrian bridge. That's across. beautiful. Yeah, it really is. Oh, I heard how that, long was uh, it in the making? A few years. You know, it's an engineering feat. St. Charles you know? uh, might yeah. uh, think about it. <laughs> and, and you, you're right about that. Taylor Swift not going to be in the concert series, right? Well, you know, <laughs> she has a bit of a following. Yes. <laughs> what What other? Let's just look at 2023. What other events, uh, trademark events, does the city of Warren have on a regular basis that? Uh, people can point to whether they're residents here or guests from up and down the valley. Sure, our largest event that we're already planning for is our Food Truck Fest, first Fridays in May. Oh, Food Truck Fest. So that's a lot of fun. I want to hear about that a little bit. Is it just one day? It's one day. Oh, i got to get here. Oh, yeah. How does that, talk a little bit more about So we have a couple dozen food trucks from all over the entire region. Right. And Anything from Colorado. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> unless there's the Colorado. Uh, Kielbasa. Um, so they park all along Benton. And, you know, we have the beautiful swimming stones and the old library and the old post office on Benton. So it's just this, and along the Fox River, the two bridges. So it's just the, the atmosphere, the ambiance is amazing. Nice. And so people, um, you know, can taste all the different food trucks and it's just a lot of fun. What else? Uh, what else can we point to the, the, the year of the in the summer and the fall? So we do some outdoor movies in the summer. We do first Fridays, of course. We have a block party on Stolp in the um, summertime in August. And what's great about Stolp is we have a lot of new restaurants. Maybe you've heard Craft Urban opens in Aurora. I did hear that, yeah. We have Stolp Island Social. We have Charlie's Creamery, which is a nice uh, craft uh, ice cream shop. And then we have El Tiro as well. And so that's all on Stolp. We have that in Geneva, right? Yeah, oh, and nice. so Bernie opened a second location in downtown Wonderful. Aurora. And we have so many small businesses. You asked about the holidays, um, great shopping opportunities, great dining. So we really focus on local, local owned uh, small businesses. Yeah. But Aurora's come a, a long way, and I you guys have so. a lot to be proud of. You know? Well, thank you. Yes, growing up here, it's really important for me to have a welcoming downtown and a lot to do. And I want my kids to be able to be like, hey, downtown's so fun. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. A good vibe in downtown is always important. Uh, and, I, and I think up and down the valley here, I think it's about a lot of the way to try to focus on the downtown area as a means of trying to bring people to your point together in the community and for the visitors as well. Uh, I can't say enough about the fact that you and uh, the people here at the Kilo Market have just made us so welcome here. Uh, and, uh, you know, you said we're here at the Kilo Market. I, I've not been. So this is my first venture in the Kino Park, and I've been wowed already, and I'm just here for about half an hour, 45 minutes. So we really, man, I both appreciate you. You don't know Ray, but to wow Ray is something special. Well, we are so excited that they're part of, of our community, and they're part of the See, see, I'm telling you guys, just, we're just be yourself. We're rolling, just man. be yourself. We're well, maybe Pat, not you, but you know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Pat. Oh, little town. 
<laughs> Bethlehem. There's some real religious artifacts here. Ah, uh, dear. Well, we're both Catholic. We're supposed a manger to be here. We're good this. We got a manger scene going. Did you make these yourself? Um, so actually, for bosses, the one who makes them, and then I think they started like this, this is 2000. I know this is sacrilegious, but Jesus is just all right with me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 60s have returned. <laughs> Hello, friends. This is Ray Rogina. You face technology challenges every day that threaten to steal business compromise data, and bring your business down. Without a good partner to help protect from phishing, ransomware, viruses, data breaches, employee turnover, and cybersecurity threats, your business is at risk of losing everything. TechWorks has been the trusted IT partner to Fox Valley businesses for over 20 years, keeping systems secure and providing extraordinary customer service, helping your business grow. Call TechWorks today at 630-482-2227 or visit www.techworks.com. That's TechWorks with a Q. T-E-Q works and see how TechWorks IT service can transform and secure your business. My whole life. Yeah, yeah, I just want a pavilion named there. <laughs> I thought Fairview Fair Plaza was all well, you, you put wanted. a little brown sign underneath that. Yeah. Well, build one in Elburn, dude. Where the sun Elburn. never sets. I'm a St. Charles. Well, the sun never sets. The sun never sets hey, pavilion. I'm, I, 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 I have in a honor of Pat Crimmins. Right here, but Wait, I, Pat Crimmins. I, uh, I don't know where he came from, but he's here. Are you going to pass the uh, police station referendum in Elburn this uh, April? Oh, we're going to work on that. Uh, it'll be an interesting podcast. Up no, there. I have some inside information to say that both the police station and the school district are going down. What do you mean? Oh, you mean the referendum? Referendum going, down? going yeah. down. I wouldn't doubt that. Really? Yeah. You, but you're going to work hard to prevent yeah. that from happening. Right, that's correct. All right. We need a police station. Right right. I think Elburn needs a police station. Right now you have a, uh, what do they call it when you fish and you cut the fish? It's a, it's a hut where you clean fish. That's our police department. Uh, okay, so more. ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard an Elburn update uh, here at the uh, Aurora Crystal Kim, Chris Kindle Our knocker producer, market. Paul Stuckel. Thank you. He's trying to All keep right, things moving here, guys. He's trying to keep things moving. Uh, hang on, guys. Oh, 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 oh. This is the Austrian. So I'm going to... Oh, my God. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Well, this is the Austria one. Yeah, this is the good stuff, man. We have bratwurst right over here. Yes. They, they probably put a little mustard on that, and uh, it, 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 you're ready to go. <laughs> None of that kielbasa crap. Oh, no, no, no. Bratwurst, serious. potato pancakes. serious bratwurst. Apple man. strudel here. Oh, too. that dude was asking for potato pancakes, right? Yeah. Now, now, now we know. Now look at those bratwurst. Uh, I think he looked better than anything at Camp Randall Stadium in Wisconsin. That's all well, I that's interesting. Hey everybody, we're here to welcome a new sponsor. His name is Ted Buckley and he has a website, tedbuckley.com. He wrote a book called Retired. What do you want to do for the next 30 years? Uh, Ted has spent uh, several years helping people plan financially for retirement. But retirement, as we all know, is much more than just money. It's the day-to-day -day aspects of retirement that we all need to work on. How are you going to make 30 years of retirement the happiest time of your life? You can buy this book at Amazon or at Barnes & Noble. We thank Ted for coming on board as a sponsor of Just a Couple of Guys. One. 
We are back in the timber tent at the Chris Kindle Market here at River's Edge Park in Aurora, Illinois. And I'm pleased to introduce uh, our guest, uh, Lauren Beaster Privy, who is the CEO and general manager of this entire operation. And first of all, welcome to Just a Couple of Guys. We're really happy to be here. We're happy to talk to you for a while. Thank you, sure. Happy uh, to be uh, Listen, let's talk to the audience a bit about your background, uh, how you got into this whole thing, uh, where you're from, and uh, lead us up right to the, you know, you coming here to war and we'll go from there. Oh, that's complicated. All right. <laughs> but I'll give you the brief and I am from Frankfurt, Germany. Right. I was born there, but lived uh, abroad in Kuwait for the first couple of years of my Kuwait. life, and then moved to Alaska. And from Alaska, where in Alaska? Anchorage. All right. Military? No. Oh. Lufthansa, German Airlines. Uh. Shameless plug. So my dad worked for Lufthansa for 44 years and traveled the world, and we were part of the the, the backpack flight. Pretty dark flight. up there in the wintertime. It's amazing. Dark here. It's, <laughs> it's colder here sometimes. I feel like yeah. in Alaska. And then Boston, and then I ended up in uh, Spain, Egypt, Greece. A well travel woman. Sounds like my childhood. Right. Um, <laughs> and then I, I uh, came back here to Chicago, became a German American, and yeah, 17 years later, or seven Chris Kindle markets later. Well, before we get to Chris Kindle market, you have the German American Chamber of Commerce, then we have the German American Chamber of Commerce Midwest. The German American distinction. Chamber of Commerce of the Midwest is what's here in Chicago, yes. our headquarters, and then we also have different uh, states that we represent, including also our chapter in Colorado that also has a Chris Kindle market. And it's not one we run, but it's also run with the German American Chamber of Commerce of the Midwest and the group that's there in chapter, as well as our representatives that are in Detroit. We know that the Chris Kindle market came to this area in 96. How does that, how does that all uh, blend with the, the association that you were talking about? Right, so originally it was started in 1995 when Ray Lauder had this idea to be able to bring transatlantic business between Germany and the United States in a form and way that was also for the small businesses, not just the large businesses. And so he started an idea of the Chris Kindle market to be able to provide that platform for that transaction to happen between uh, the visitor in the U.S. and customer in the U.S. and the German products. And the Chris Kindle market is a great way to kind of deliver that. No, wait a minute. No, I know it started in Chicago. Uh, how did you get it out here in the world? Oh boy. Well, we first started uh, with a second location in Oak Brook, and we did that for two years, in 2007 and 8. And then the mall had a revamp, basically it was redesigned. We came back in 14 and 15 to Oak Brook and Chicago. Then we did Naperville, we did Milwaukee, and now we're in Aurora in 2022. Yeah, are you worried about saturating the market, having one in Chicago, one at Gallagher Way and here? No. And the reason for that is because in Germany, any town you go to, even the tiny town I live in, right outside of the Frankfurt Airport, everybody has a Christmas market and their form of a Christmas market, right? So you go to Berlin or you go to Vienna and you see difference, you know, in that. And as well as with us, you see differences in also the vendors. It's not always the same vendors. A lot of them are the, the staple vendors because those are must-haves. And then you have the ones that are unique to the area. Well, this, this particular holiday season, you've got three going. Yep. Chicago, well, two in Chicago, one downtown, and one at New Ridley Field. Right. And then, of course, you got the one out here. The patch point, then, and, and to your point about differences, uh, are there any vendors here or also in the other two places as well? Yes, absolutely. So, Kate's Blue Fun is our largest tent, and they're the known uh, German Christmas vendor that is actually known around the world, right? And it's kind of one of those staples I was talking about. You have to have that anchor. And that's one that's a must have. I mean, you see the line outside, right? Uh, I saw a lot, several long lines I walk here into the different thing. Although we're trying to get an international audience, most of our audience comes from the Fox Valley. So I guess the question is, uh, will I have the entire experience here in Aurora? Am I missing something by not going to Chicago? Actually, I think you get the best of all worlds here because we also have vendors that are were exclusively in Wrigley and that are here as well. So you kind of have, you know, the lovely donuts. I don't know if you've heard of them. The amazing hot chocolate, the hot plus, right? The apple strudel, the kielbasa, and the pierogi. You have uh, vendors that come from Kenya, 
Austria, South America. I was going to comment on that for our audience. So this is not exclusively a German fence. That you have regional diversity here, and you just ran off a number of other areas represented here at the market. For us, it's really important to make what's up. I'm from Frankfurt, Germany. So in our market at home, in the main room of pets, we have vendors that also come from different regions and more parts of the world. Because that's pretty typical, right? And it's kind of amazing because we don't have to travel to Europe to experience it or anywhere else in the world. And everybody has to be and everybody's welcome, right? It's a free event. Nice. So, uh, one of the traditions of every market uh, are the uh, the mugs that people use for uh, hot chocolate, etc. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about the tradition of the mugs and uh, what mug can we get here? And is it different than Chicago or Gallagher Way? So currently, our annual mug is this blue one right here. Ah, it's handy. also in uh, kind of representation for the Year of Dance, which is celebrated in the city of Chicago. It has the Paramount Theater for Aurora, a downtown nice. scene for Chicago, and then Gallagher Way for Rick. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. A combination. Yeah. A combination. How about this particular mug here? This is actually a fan favorite. It was named Gretchen. Gretchen is the sister to Peppermint. Peppermint was our penguin last year that had the tuxedo on for our 25th anniversary last year. Yeah, lots of meat things. I'm telling you. And the best hot money. chocolate gets served in that from Bob's Belgian hot chocolate that you can't miss. Uh, my daughter uh, dragged, dragged me down to the Chicago market, and uh, I think her only desire was to get a mug and to get a picture of herself with a mug, and it was a boot. Is that still is still available or no? Well, we're just going to have to be patient, but ah. we've only had the boot eight times total, by the way, in our 26 years. So we kind of want to mix it up a little bit because who wants an entire collection of dress moves? Right. You know, and there's so many different designs that are around Europe. So we want to introduce something new this year, but looking for a boot on me. Ah. You uh, have a lot of activity going on outside, and I, I, I'm sure you can't be biased, but you have a favorite activity or activity that take place. And this is a month long event here, yeah, looking at the dates. We've just gotten rolling, and there's, there's a huge crowd here on the Saturday night. But, uh, any favorite event? I love the Children's Lantern Parade. Children's Lantern Parade. Yeah. Is that every night or that? So that's at all of our locations one time, and it's to celebrate St. Martin. And so the children get a crown, just to be like the Christian, and they also get to have a lantern, and it lights up, and they walk around the plaza singing songs. So it's really family friendly. What day is St. Martin's Day? St. Martin's Day is different every year, but we, we don't celebrate at the same time because our market starts later. So we have specific days where we still like to celebrate. But, and it's fun for the but I, I understand that this lantern parade is one time. One time at each location. At each location. Yeah, and the Chris kid, she comes out on different days, but usually the weekends, and you can see her through the run. I, I'm confused. What is uh, the tradition? What is she in, in the, the scheme of things? So the Chris kid, I, I don't believe in Santa. I believe in the Chris kid. Agnostic, I think they call it. <laughs> I've come to the conclusion that uh, it's better to be European. Well, last Christmas. week, last week we're in Geneva and, and we had a Swedish yeah. Santa Lucia. Now we got, you know, it's all over the place. I mean, I just get the old guy with the beard. It smells of You know. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, times. Uh, we know that for the most part, the market's open from Thursday to Sunday. Uh, up to December 24th. Right. Obviously, it closes on 24th Christmas Eve. But you do have a special for week of Christmas, is that correct? Right, so we're open literally the whole week before Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Eve is our last day. It's in Chicago our last day, and we close at 4 o'clock in Chicago on Christmas Eve and here in Aurora. And also in Wrigley, but we open in Wrigley again on the 26th until the 31st. Wow. Only at Wrigley are you Only open for Wrigley. five or one five more week. Four. One more week. 
I assume that the city of Aurora has been very cooperative with you here at the uh, River Park. River Edge Park, the Paramount, ACA, the city of Aurora, the mayor of Aurora, everybody has been welcoming. I mean, we feel literally like VIPs. And that's great to hear, you know, a city... If the kind of the crowd are coming to a city like this, the city should be doing something. This is well done. This facility at Rivers Park is just a wonderful facility, and uh, you know uh, we're going to talk probably about what other things are going to be happening here. We're very, excited. Uh, very excited with our executive director of uh, downtown Aurora a little bit. But anyway, uh, on behalf of Pat and our producer Paul, we really appreciate you welcoming us here to uh, the Rivers Park Central Lodge. Chris Market. <laughs> well, we have to practice together how to say Merry Christmas in German. Ah. So you say, Fua, Fua, Weina. Weina. One, two, three. Fua, Weina. And a Merry Christmas, too. <laughs> Happy holidays. Maren Booster, Creep. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Nice to meet you. Nice to we'll be right back. What we got here? Alberta, Canada. We've got more Canadians here. You think one of them will do a dance for us? Let's go talk to us right here. Absolutely. Here. So we want to talk to you about these scars. They look beautiful. Alpaca. 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 Oh, please. Yeah. Touchable boot here. Oh. Oh, my. They look beautiful. <laughs> yeah, these animals is the natural. Where are you at in Alberta? Near Calgary? Um, my boss is, yeah, or up by, by Calgary, yeah, in Alberta. All right. Yeah, one of them is actually from Calgary. <laughs> and then we, my wife Tough and I writers. spend a nice time in, in Banff. We love Banff. It's beautiful up there. Are you, are, you, are you clear that it's colder in Aurora than it is in Alberta, Canada? Um, no, that's not the case. I don't know if we're either. <laughs> Ray, what do you think about the this? The Canadian Rockies is hard to uh, Where's the if, wife? If Diane, uh, Diane, uh, Diane, uh, Diane would uh, step Potential. in here and give a woman's opinion about Potential, what uh, you might like. Oh, it's wow. dirty. Potential gift for Ray. Wow. They're all beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Wow. If you'd like one of those, I'll buy it for you right now. 35? Oh, that's mitten. Those are 55. 50. I would buy one. We don't want you to lose the scarf. Can you attach it? Look at those little hands. Are they? If you like something here, I'll buy it for you. Uh oh. <laughs> what May doing? I unfurl the scarf and have her try it on? <laughs> okay, so guys, remember there is a video guy behind you. It'd be kind of nice to be able to video all this stuff. Oh, oh. seriously. Oh. See the mittens? So you can do your cell phone, and then when you get cold, you put the apple over and maybe you can come would you like something? <laughs> They're beautiful, I have to admit. I, I can't deny it. Yeah. What is that? Do you want to wear it tonight? I can cut the tape No, no. I'm making the transaction right now, Paul. Uh, that's good noise. This is not on the podcast, brother. How many <laughs> alpacas had to perish in order to make that? Yes. Oh, it's just that you cut their fur. Thank you. I was just worried about the audience. You know. <laughs> that's right. Right. That's right. Because I should wear it tonight, though. I haven't worn with alpaca fur. Like you wear it tonight? I. Uh, he's packing up. No, you get no credit. You get, unless you unless you pay for part of it, you get no credit. <laughs> Agreed. Agree. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. There you go. <laughs> nice. Uh, the tax lawyers we need. Is that a write-off business expense? No, nope. no, no. This is not coming from the podcast. This is a personal expenditure. I know the lead credit card. Yeah. 
Oh, you go, Ray. Did you get that transaction? I got it, buddy. In fact, I got the credit card too, so you're in, you're in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> got big cheese here again. Yeah, big cheese. That's right. We have fancy goods, whatever those fancy goods may be. I see a lot of fur. Squishables. Oh, I wanted to see this. These are things you squish. Alright, Pat, here's some, here's, some, here's some nice uh, fruits for the daughter. These are squishables. What do we have here? Could you explain Nick, squishables Pat, to us? Take over. Squishables. Come in and snuggle something. Oh, watch what you watch so for something. Squishables are stuffed animals that are super squishy and help you relieve your stress. Oh. Well, super adorable. Nice. They do look adorable. Yeah. So they're like uh, uh, stress balls, but they they're. Be, yes. Yeah. I see. Well, we don't have any stress in our family, so, right? That's a little, you know, that's a little side joke. That's awesome. They're very nice. Are they homemade? You made an excellent lot? No, we work for the company. Oh, I see. Very cool. Thank you. Very nice. Very neat. Squishables for everybody. Podcast gift. Hey, now. Hey, now. We'll bring you a Christmas celebration. Pat? I found a place that you need to talk to. Irish Sisters over here. I'm kind of hoping that Pat will buy something over here from the Irish Sisters. Mr. Irish himself. Look at him. They've got all kinds of scarves and things. Nice. Irish. Let's see if Pat lays a little lumber down here. That's it. Let's, Let's see, see it. Oh, walk right up. Walk. This man is Irish. So he... Oh, look. Pat. Hi, it's how you are that you? Pat. A hand is Pat. Right there. Look at that. Wow. Husky binders, right? Oh, nice. my God. I'm trying to talk him into buying an Ivy League hat. Where are you guys from? Oh, you look good, miss. That's a nice look. Batavia. Batavia, nice. Is that uh, uh, Southern Ireland or is that <laughs> Mid-Ireland? That's <laughs> outside a cabin. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's over by Killarney. I really think you look good in an Ivy League hat. We, we, can, we can get rid of him if you don't want to. Very nice. Tell me do. Look at that. Very nice. Uh, so, uh, are you having a good time here? Yes. Making some sales? Yeah, yeah. Good. Oh, well. We've been downtown for many years. Right. At the market there at Daily Plaza. When they open this, it's 10, 15 minutes. Do you know my friend Jeff Schalke? I know Jeff quite well. Do you? Yes. How would you evaluate him as the mayor? Of the <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas, Ray. It's Christmas. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. There you go. I agree with you. Absolutely. Jeff's a great guy. So it was a geographical decision. Tell, tell the former mayor of St. Charles said hello. Get home in 10 minutes, have a Guinness and 15. Sure. Sure. <laughs> how, how do the sales compare? Almost as good. Almost as good. Close, you can't beat it. Close. Look at all the gas money you saved. Yes. That's right. Well, the I still think you should buy an Ivy League hat. They're very nice. Well, I, don't, I didn't go to an Ivy League school. I have about five of those hats on the table. You look sharp in one of them. That I move Step up I in am. class. <laughs> Why start now? You know. So you guys from the No. St. Charles. No, okay. I, no, I work. I'm the former mayor of St. Charles, and uh, Shelky is a good man. You're exactly okay. correct. I used to live in St. Charles. You were before. You were after Fred. Uh, yes, I was after Fred yes. and Clinkhammer and Dewitt. Okay. After. Well, exactly. I know Fred pretty good. You know Fred? He's I a good man. Old, I was an alderman in Geneva while he was mayor. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, he's he's a senior member of the St. Charles Mayor's Club, which now totals five. Five living members. No. With Shelky, there are no. There's only there's only one. There's only one. 
All right, thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> Merry Christmas. You got anything you want. I got anything you I want. All, all, anything and everything you want. You, you have, have a fun time editing. Oh, this is, I'm gonna have a blast. I am gonna have a blast editing. All right. All right, what do we got here? So we got, we're, we're moseying to the left here. I, 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 I know you're looking at your watch. A nice place for the intro. That's it. The, the, just to the left here is, is where we're going. The union's calling. <laughs> Strike. Just go ahead and strike. Oh, this is. See, okay, this is. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have a discussion here. Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful scarf you're wearing tonight. I gotta tell you that right now. Oh, that's Ecodunia. Ecodunia, we're right here. That's nice. Now, why would a person from Kenya be involved in? Oh, these aren't scarves. These are pants. Yeah. Because otherwise I was confused. No. You don't have winter. In we Kenya. do not have winter. Yeah. We do not have scabs. <laughs> <laughs> but bags, bags we need. So is it is it tough for you to come and and, and work here in, a, in an environment where it's cold? It is. It is cold. This is my first winter, so when it's snowed, I just called a friend and I was like. I don't, I don't have the clothing. This is nothing. <laughs> I love your accent. I love your accent. So she lent me a jacket. So now I have a jacket. And, and a beautiful put, scarf. And I bought a Very scarf. Nice scarf. And I have the shoes. So <laughs> now I don't feel as cold. And I have a heater. Ah, very nice. This okay. isn't even close to being winter. Yet. I, so are you here the rest of the month? I'm here for the rest of the month. I'll be gone when it gets oh. really cold. Yes, so. yes. Well, we'll be thinking of you. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas to you. Merry what kind Christmas. of what kind of cloth is this made out of? That is actually 100% cotton, and it's just screen printed. Okay. Is that because there is some Kenyan? Is that is the cotton coming from Kenya, or is it? All cotton comes from Kenya. We make sure that we don't have anything against China or big brands, but we make sure that our cotton comes from small scale farmers Madonna. in Kenya. So 90% comes from Kenya, and 10%. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, my uh, when I'm not working with these clowns, I, my my uh, I've got I've got, a, I've got uh, some some interest in Berbera over in uh, Somaliland. So I mean, I'm familiar with the region. So it's like um, it's really neat to see you here. I, I must tell you, it's really neat to see you. Well, I don't know. It gives me a, it gives me a connection to when I'm over there, right? You know, you know what I mean. Anyway. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by. Sure. Have you Thank you, you too. Oh. All right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I had to, you know, ditch you, you guys for a minute. No, 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 no. We had to talk about, to we had to talk about, to we had to talk about the Horn of Africa. Yeah. We're, we actually are close to the end. I think we need to go, don't we need to go that way yeah. and then around? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. All right. Good stuff. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hi. Merry Christmas. Oh, no, he's back. He's talking about Shoki again. Ray running for the county board. He's, he's Ray is running for the county board. Oh, There's no doubt about it. He is not. He's always working the room. <laughs> oh my god. It has nothing to do with this county board. <laughs> <laughs> How the donuts look good. Donuts. Donuts he was talking Ooh, about. Oh, decadent. What's a dip? What donut kind holes. of a donut? Oh, oh. Alright. Oh, they're making them fresh. <laughs> Do they make them donuts? Oh, donuts. Like stands, don't it? That would be like the reason. We only had 11,000 miles. I'm, I'm, God help us. Well, what an evening here. It's fantastic. I'm exhausted, but uh, I think we've uh, surveyed every hut. You can survey. I enjoyed. I, I, I we started in the t in the uh, timber lodge, right? I, I, timber tent. <laughs> we started there, and we had some uh, refreshments. We had uh, kielbasa. Kielbasa. Uh, we had some uh, sauerkraut, and uh, 
I had a beer and you had the uh, soft the, drink. The uh, seltzer water. Uh, but the fact is that they were, the, the hostesses were hospitable, they were gregarious, and they were fun. Yes. We really enjoyed ourselves here. And then walking around here, as you're seeing some, not, the crowds are big, but walking around here and seeing some of the tents and what they have to right. offer, it's quite interesting. Uh, Wonderful people. Uh, they're all just trying to make a living. They're small businesses. We're all big fans, right? It is. This actually is the epitome of small business right here at the, at the Kindle Market. And uh, I can't say enough about my first visit. I know you've been before. I have been before. And uh, all I can say is uh, we want to thank our producer, Paul Stuckel, for suggesting that we should probably spend some time. I would say that the comparison with Chicago is we have more space here, it seems like. Because uh, I went to the Daily Center and everything seemed a little more cramped. Well, uh, so it seems like we people have can space. walk around here, and so I would suggest that if you've got time before December 24th, on the weekend between Thursday and Sunday, you ought to come and pay a visit here at River Edge Park in Aurora to the Chris Kindle Market. So, what? as we Wait, go ahead, I'm going to check flights to Colorado because uh, <laughs> this Kill Boss guy, he's my man. Yeah, he's your guy. He's your guy. <laughs> I, I, on that note, for, for our producer. Our crew back in action after back a bad back for yes. a while. Hippa. Hippa. Oh, Hippa. <laughs> Paul Stuckel, uh and for my my great partner here, Beth Crimmins. This is Ray Rogan saying, wishing you all a pleasant good evening from Rivers Edge Park. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to both of you. So long, everyone. So long.